Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Group Chat. We are back in action, fresh off of the fight of the century. Wow. I mean, the energy was electric. Electric. We got to talk about it. Um, we'll do a little recap. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Everyone has a lot of mixed reviews. Some people are very upset. Haters. There's a full conspiracy theory. Ah, uh, yeah. Bullshit. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about all of it. I want to know. I can't wait. Um, and what else? You have a new... Uh, collab that you're doing with Ian, a, a crypto collab? Yeah, so Ian Rogers, our good friend over at Ledger, um, we were talking and he gets hit up for all these crypto questions all the time. Mm. So I was thinking, let's just open it up to our audience. Okay. If you have a question, Ian will answer it. We'll send it to him. He's out in Paris. Okay. So either DM the group chat account or email group chat uh, questions at gmail.com okay. and any questions you have on crypto, we'll send it over to Ian and let's get popping. And then he's going to record his answer and we're going to air it? Yes. Ah, oh, that's good. Can I just give one caveat for listeners who do have crypto questions? Yeah. Don't make it what coin's the next one that's going to pop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no one knows. Come rock it! Yeah, we're going to skip those ones. Ask skip. coin! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask whatever you want about how crypto works. Ask about storage. How storage. Yeah. If your DM or email says to the moon, it will be deleted. (laughs) The way I talk to uh, (laughs) my mom's private wealth. We have a great story about that this episode. Uh, Yes, good point. So submit your questions, either of those two places. Ian will uh, record his answers and we'll share a little bit of wisdom, hopefully. Yeah, can't wait. Okay, let's get into it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. All right, uh, here we are. We, yeah. it's crazy in the in the time, how fast everything moves. Uh, feels like it was forever ago. But the fight of the century, fight fight of the century is an understatement. What do we think? I was blown away. Yeah, I it lived up to the hype. Yeah. I know everyone, I don't know what everyone was complaining about. Like, you knew you're a YouTuber is fighting for I think Mayweather. people yeah. just wanted to complain yeah. because people just didn't want to accept that this was blockbuster entertainment. Yeah, I think, look, it's like, sure, fourth round, Floyd Mayweather viciously KOs Logan Paul. That's what everyone wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, come on. So do you subscribe to the belief that Floyd held him up? Because no. that's hot on TikTok. Zero. Oh, really? No, no, zero chance. It's just not, that's not what a knockout looks like. Like you can't, even if he held him up, you don't, when you get knocked out, you don't get held up for like two seconds and then you're walking normally again. Yeah. Like you're wobbly and there's, that's, that's, that's not what happened. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Cause there are takes that Floyd has been hit like three times in his career. Yeah. Viciously. Yeah. But it was at the end of the bell and he had the two minutes or whatever, three minutes to regroup. Yeah. And then he went on to win his match. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying it was instant, like meaning the clip is really deceptive because it shows it look like um, Floyd's holding him and then the clip cuts. But right after that, they were separated and they both had normal legs. And like um, that happened famously like last week in the Devin Haney fight is at the bell, he got rocked and he looked like a baby deer walking back to his corner. And it was like, oh my God, if if there was 10 more seconds, he would have been done. Um, But you just don't, you don't have full legs like, I, there's just no chance. There's no way. But yeah. I do think that Floyd, well, no, I guess I don't. At first, I thought Floyd was going kind of easy on him, but I honestly don't think he was. I think Floyd was a little sketch. I think anytime he got close, Logan grabbed him. And so he couldn't really do anything with that. Yeah. And anytime he tried to stay out of range, he couldn't reach Logan. And I think it's a little sketchy. Like, I think there was probably a part of him that was like, like, this guy could catch me like this isn't there is danger here yeah and i'm not gonna risk yep that so i'm just gonna play it safe tag him a couple times we're gonna have our fun from an entertainment perspective i couldn't have asked for more i we we watched in d's backyard yeah had some cocktails yeah i had fomo for that and it was just like fun yeah yeah high energy We got screaming and stuff. At yeah, round yeah. one, I was up at the TV. <laughs> Kick his ass! <laughs> Dom stayed up for at least a few rounds. Yeah, Dom oh, was there oh just, God. you know, like... He's got to learn early. Yeah, he, drinking Dom, his to- you want to make money in life? Yeah, to- he had his Topo Chico. Throw on the gloves. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, I, look, it was amazing. I, and I think that, like, uh, you got to give 
a lot of credit to Logan. Yeah. Not only would that be the scariest thing in the world, stepping in that ring in front of all of those people, but like he he survived. Yeah. I think he legitimately survived. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he looked like a hero. He's I a mean, legitimate boxer. He yeah. went eight rounds with Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Arguably the greatest boxer of all time. Yes. I'll still just say this because I do want to try to keep it real. He goes in the ring with another 195-er that's like a, even a decent low-level pro. Totally different story. <laughs> that's it. Probably. But, but. But the cardio aspect of it. Yes. To even last with Floyd, you're yes. a YouTuber. Yep. Yeah. That, what, what'd you do? High school wrestling? Yes. And I believe that Floyd was trying. I don't think Floyd. I think Floyd was trying to take him out and couldn't. And the fact that Logan Paul could stand in the ring with Floyd. I don't care how old he is. He I don't care anything. In the face. He got punched in the face. He, he, I mean, that. I'll tell you this. Uh, one of those punches, I'm done. Yeah. One of those hooks. One of those anything yeah. Floyd hit him with. Uh, <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs> those kids are so tough. They're yeah, tough. They're tough. And, you know, Jake um, was in the audience. Uh, and, Me and Jake. And, and, and he was, uh, you know, after every round, okay, two, uh, Logan won two, yeah. Floyd won three, two. <laughs> yeah. Just like they are so good. Yep. I mean, and just even Jake's presence, the way that he looked, the way he that he's talking. Yeah, he he probably insane. He probably irritated people so much yeah. that I was like, fuck, I love these guys. They're so good at what they do. Yeah. And the, I think the other thing that I thought was incredible was Logan Paul at the end, when the guy was talking to him, yeah. mm -hmm. Logan was like, man, I don't want to be a dick to y'all. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he was I, actually like a genuine kid at that point yeah. where he was just like, Fuck, I just fought How could Floyd you not? Mayweather. Imagine that feeling. And yeah. no, and I thought that was actually a really cool moment. I thought that was actually the coolest moment of the whole fight was Logan's speech at the end. It's like, like you can, I know I'm a dickhead, yeah. but like we're, we're this is theater. Yeah. But man, you can accomplish anything. And it's like a message to the youth. Yeah. His fans are young. Like yeah. you put your mind to things, you can break down barriers yeah. and you can accomplish things. Yeah. And for all the fuckery, like I have zero hate. On Logan Paul. No. Jake Paul, I think, is very hateable. <laughs> I think Logan, and I think Jake is probably the best thing that happened to Logan because he makes Logan look so good <laughs> yeah. and gives him so much hype. I mean, how many how many pay-per-views were sold because of the got your hat moment? Oh, yeah. my God. You know what I mean? Like an extra 500,000? Yeah. I don't know. But like, it makes Logan look like a saint. And I think Logan really did like grow up a lot. Yeah. And it's also you know? like yeah. the antithesis of this Gen Z generation about hard work Focusing on your craft. Yeah. Like to be able to go from filming in Japan, which whatever he did, which was almost cancelable. Yeah. It to, was canceled. I mean, he was canceled. Yeah. Yeah. He was canceled. Yeah. And then to becoming a pro boxer, he talks about it in that Showtime uh, yeah. special. Yeah. Like it saved his life and he dedicated his life to be a professional boxer. Yeah. Fought Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. And says anything's possible. Yeah. And, the, and, yeah, it, yeah, it was good. and that's hard work. That's the thing. I think yeah. the youth can like kind of take from it. Like you don't go from YouTuber to boxing Floyd Mayweather lasting eight rounds unless you put in the time. Yeah. 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 I agree. I totally agree. A hundred percent. The part of it that I don't like was like the old Logan and arguably the current Jake, which is like just fuckery is the path to success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That I think sucks, but like, Yo, I just fought Floyd Mayweather, made millions of dollars. I had to get in crazy shape to do it. All that stuff. Anything's possible. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. And for context, the Jake Paul video, I just looked that he filmed After? at the end of the fight. You yeah, know, he was like the last career. 30 seconds. Yeah. That has 7.8 million views. Yeah. 7.8 million views. That outranks every single NBA playoff game. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anyone. First of all, another fumble on the app. Like, the app's bullshit. The Showtime app. Bullshit. Boned me, man. I had to download Fan Mio. <laughs> yeah. What is, I saw that people were posting Fan Mio. Just some, like, Fan Mio. I don't even know. It's just some app that only, I guess, has that fight. Like, the icon for the app is Logan and, or, uh, Logan and, and Floyd. And luckily, they had the Showtime stream, so it was good quality. But the Showtime app would not work. I bought the fight twice, paid $100 for that oh bullshit. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you gave 50 to Showtime, 50 to Fan Mio. Yep. 
And 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 so I I started. It was worth it though. I was. It was. <laughs> and we we haven't gotten the uh, the numbers yet. I'm sure we'll get in the next day or two. What's the guy? Um, one point five. So uh, so the way to think about it is, uh, I think the highest ever is four point five million. In fighting. Fighting. Okay. Pay per view. Um, I forget what that was. Connor Floyd. Probably. Who's either Pacquiao? that or like a Pacquiao? Or Pacquiao maybe. Floyd. I forget they showed the list. Is yeah. it Floyd Pacquiao? Well, you can look it up, Jason. Please. It was it was Floyd Connor. Floyd Connor, and that was yeah. four point five. Um, it was in twenty seventeen. I mean, Conor McGregor got beat up worse than uh, Logan. Yes, one hundred percent. That's crazy. We can't yes, was, discount that he's forty four, but 4, 4. still four point six million. Connor was three years ago. It wasn't that long. He was still over forty, Floyd. And and keep in mind uh, the way that work the the, the pay per view works is it's. Uh, reported that Floyd gets 50%. I saw that. With a $10 million yep. guarantee. Yep. J- uh, Logan got 250000 guarantee and 10%. Yep. So Floyd thought he was going to make 100. Logan thought he was going to make 20, which would make it the highest pay-per-view ever. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I don't know anyone who didn't watch it of my close friends. Yeah, I mean, let's say 2 million... At fifty, that's a hundred. Yeah, and then so that's fifty million, and Floyd gets, uh, so Floyd gets fifty million, and Jake would get ten million. Logan gets ten million. Yeah, plus they sold crazy sponsors. Only fans shorts. hat on Floyd Mayweather, Ethereum Max, all the uh, patches, patches on there, thing. and then he wore a mask which had an ad. And yeah, Floyd did BET or something or Bet Online. Sorry. Bet Online, yeah. and then Logan wore his Pokemon card, mm-hmm. and uh, and then uh, Fashion Nova Man was also on Floyd. Yeah, because um, Rich had nice seats. What was interesting is is because this is like basically an internet fight. After the fight, the videos I just my friends who were just like hanging out with Logan Paul, yeah. just like 400 people in his backstage yeah. or whatever it is, his green room. Yeah. They're all at the club. They're all at Where'd Live after Live? <laughs> You know what's interesting is it was a Floyd after party at Live. I searched every Live hashtag and I didn't see Floyd there. He was probably tired. He might have. <laughs> some of those Logan hits. He took a couple hits. Yeah. Maybe, man. Maybe it's been a little dizzy. Yeah. Even Floyd, the way he talked about it. Floyd's a politician. Yeah. He's Just so a, good at this. Yeah. He's so good at it. Yeah. Joe Rogan had a great Instagram. I don't know if you got to catch it. Yeah. But- so good. Floyd was just, he's just a marketing yeah. genius to do this in your mid forties when you're way past your prime yeah. and still clear this kind of money in a fight. You know who he should train? Naomi Osaka. Floyd? Not for fighting. Put them together and just teach her how to bullshit her way through press. He does such a good job. Yes. Yeah. He just has like lines planned and he just cruises through. And he always praises his competitor. Yeah. After all the shit he talks yeah. through all the 24-7s, he's done this with every fight. Yeah. Whether it's Hell Tala of a Hoya, champion. Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Uh, you name it. Everyone. All right. Well, look, well worth it. Um I think everyone finds a reason to be upset after these things. But well, why is everyone upset? Don't you think if you're a sportscaster, you're not allowed to say, like, that was great? No, I'll tell Max you, Kellerman loves it. I, I'll tell he's, you, a, he's a boxing expert. No, I'll tell you the biggest problem. I went to, you were still over. I turned on ESPN. They were showing freaking hockey and baseball or whatever. I was like, no highlights? No highlights from the biggest thing happening in sports? Why don't you just take it? This is just a miss on ESPN's part. Yeah. ESPN should have been doing coverage like the Super Bowl live from the arena. We're well, talking. No one watches ESPN, and this is why yeah. they get like a couple hundred thousand viewers. While Jake Paul's getting seven million views yeah. on his Instagram. That's I mean, good. if I'm ESPN, I'm locking up every. F- I mean, first of all, I didn't enjoy these undercard fights that were not YouTubers or TikTok stars. I was expecting oh, like, was I thought it was like Guy Fury versus, yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. Like, Guy Fury Honey versus, Boo Boo versus King. King. <laughs> Yeah, I mean like, Ocho Cinco, I watched it. I did not watch any of the other ones. Yeah. Because I don't want to see real boxing. I thought we were signing up for, I agree. Randoms fighting. They always got to stuff a few in there. Like I want the real estate agent brothers from like Netflix. Altman. Yeah, Altman <laughs> brothers. The, the Altman versus... They fight each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. Okay. Well, yeah, that's why. I mean, I think there is such an opportunity here to have a fuckery fight club. Where yeah. you just like, look, I, I think from what I saw of it and the highlights, I came in a little late because Showtime fucked me. But uh, the Ocho Cinco fight was entertaining. It was great. It was so good. Do more of that. Second, it was the second fight of the century. 
I wonder if this TikTok YouTube thing is actually going to happen. Isn't that this weekend? Is that the Bryce Hall Austin yes. fight? Wow. But is there's that a whole Miami list of them. I think it's Vegas, right? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. But I hear that it's like Firefest and not going to happen. But uh, Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Because they couldn't sell the tickets? Yeah, something like it's just all kind of poorly done. That's too bad. Is what I've heard. But I don't know. I mean, there's so much hype around it. They just fight on TikTok. You're right. They should just go to someone's backyard. Yeah. Let's go should, to Logan. He has a ring in his backyard. I, they, should do a, they should do a TikTok should start a new league. Yeah. Okay. It's 15 second rounds. It's just go. Yeah. 15 seconds. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And, just, and yeah. then next round. And then swipe, <laughs> swipe up. Like round not, two. not to like <laughs> encourage this, but mm-hmm. I remember being in college and bum fights was the biggest thing on the planet. Yeah. You're right. So this could be like the uh, morally sound bum fights is TikTok fights. Yeah, I mean, I need to... People, the reason why the amateur fights work better than professional fights is you're more likely to get a knockout. Okay, so how about we use the bum fight model and you just, one TikToker gets to just surprise fight another one. But here's the thing. It has to be people we know. I don't want to see like two random people fight. I'd rather have like Guy Fury versus the other chef. No, but like, do you think... How many people would watch if, like, Bryce Hall was fighting? I know they're boys. Taylor, what's Holder. his last name? Holder. Holder. Taylor Holder. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a bottle comes and he just smacks him over the head. Yeah, That's like, too much. Just like D said, introduce a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> just one at a time. Like, here's a broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> It can't be bottles. The only thing that kind of sucks is, like, you really do have to, like, Logan and Jake have trained for three years, I think. And for it to really be entertaining, that's like kind of the threshold. Yeah. Like those early fights sucked. You know, like Didn't I think. Logan only fight once. Yeah. yeah and he, he lost. He lost. Tie. Yeah. I, I saw this one <laughs> angry boxer. Or twice, right? Didn't he have like a tie? Yeah, he, he had a tie the first time and then the second time he lost. Yeah. But the first uh, one was amateur. He had that headgear. It was amateur. Yeah, technically. <laughs> um, Good stuff. Good stuff, man. I'm First opponent it. KSI, second opponent Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, keep fighting. I, it's just like, what do you do from here? I feel like he should move on to the next thing. Like, you just, you, what are you going to fight now? Like, Jake took a totally different route. He has quite a long, like, trail here, a uh, uh, path here. Logan, what do you do? Conor McGregor? Yeah, why not? That's it. Or go other famous people. I know, but it's hard. Who, yeah. like? Ben, ben Affleck. Affleck. Ben yeah. Affleck. I mean, he would just <laughs> annihilate Ben Affleck. Okay. Who's Alex it? Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez. That's perfect. You'd still destroy him. That's a Nate Robinson situation. Uh, the problem is it was billed as the best fighter of all time. Yeah. So now you either go like Canelo Alvarez, <laughs> yeah. who <laughs> destroys you. Yeah. Or, or, a, or a Grizzly Who's bear. Spider-Man? One of the Marvel guys. I want the real Spider-Man. Chris Hemsworth. I want someone to find Chris him. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, that'd be good. Sure. But he'd He's fucking big. destroy him. I think Michael B. Jordan needs to get in the ring. Oh, that'd be good. I agree. He's got to be good, right? I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> trained that for Creed training. What, two movies? Yeah. He had good form in Creed. <laughs> yeah, he looked big. I'll tell you what, though. You know what else it reminds me of? That would be thing? Blockbuster. Michael, Michael B. Jordan, yeah. Logan Paul. Yeah. I mean, he Michael would make more money doing that than any movie ever. He would. He'd probably make $30, $40 million. Easy. Um, the one thing it did remind me though is why big bodyguards are so effective. Because just size, yeah. being able to grab a guy up yeah, yeah, yeah. is yeah. solves the problem. Yeah. Eliminate the threat. I agree. Okay. You guys ready for some news? Yep. Let's talk about freaking Reddit stocks, man. Yeah. What's going on? Anand walks in here today and he's like, yo, Reddit's on fire. <laughs> he's like, just made a few mil this morning. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> um, I wish I did. But do we have like new, is there new Reddit stocks that are popping off now? Or am I already? I thought I was in the know because I knew like, okay, AMC, GameStop. But is there, there's new things that Reddit's on? All kinds of new things. Oh so in the last gosh. 48 hours, Reddit has targeted Clover Health. What's that? Clover Health is a health insurance company that... It's basically for like Medicaid, so old people. What's the? Is there anything revolutionary? Technology, and from know, what blah, I've heard, blah. it's not a good company. I've, some that's, some people have said. I mean, I think that's sort of one of the deciding factors. Yeah, if you if Reddit gets behind it, it functionally should not be. No, a no. Good no. So the reason why they, they get behind it is because they look at. So this is what Reddit's doing now. They look at what are the most shorted companies in the stock market. So they saw Clover Health. Earlier this week, had a forty percent short interest on on the stock. So that means so, like that's an insane number. It was the most shorted stock from a, like a relative 
value yeah. standpoint. And why were people shorting it? Because it's not a good company. <laughs> Some people believe it's not a good company. Forty percent. <laughs> <laughs> we have a number, <laughs> which is ripe, ripe for. So basically, I think Reddit has, and I think we have to like actually talk about this in a different way because this isn't retail. Yeah. This is basically Reddit Wall Street bets comes up with a thesis, yeah, and funds are piling on because it is the main goal to screw. The hedge funds. It's not screwing. It's if to they make money. know it's a math, it's a math equation. If they can get enough people to go long in volume, the hedge funds are going to have to start start selling their positions to cover their shorts. So they're just doing the short squeeze. Yes, they've mastered it. They've mastered it. And Clover, which is not AMC, like AMC's fun, great TikToks about yeah, at least guys go saying, there. like the owner, I'm the owner. Yeah, you know, the one TikTok I yeah. sent, which was incredible. Yeah, and Clover Health. You know, no average person knows what Clover Health is. And they've just figured out a math equation when a company's heavily shorted. So when you're short a company, yeah. you can lose unlimited. Yeah. As long as it keeps going up. As long as it keeps going up. If you're long a company, you pay 60 bucks a share, you can lose $60. That's the max. But so, if you're, so it's just however long you're willing to hold before you close out that position. Exactly. You'll bleed until you And give most up. of these shorts. Because you can go from 60 to 600, you've now lost $600. And, and the $540 nature, versus 60 bucks if you were just long. But you can hold $600 to $6 million. You have to yeah. keep covering because most the of problem. them are on leverage. They're yeah. all leverage. They're all, yeah. Yeah. Average people don't short stocks. The people that short stocks are usually funds who aren't putting up all the money. They're putting up some percentage of yeah. it, taking leverage on the rest. It's gambling. And this is what we were talking about during the GameStop first iteration was it should be probably banned. It's shorting. a fun, yeah. Leveraging yeah, yeah. shorts? Definitely leverage shorts, but just shorting in general. It's, it's like this made up financial instrument because some people wanted to bet against stocks and... So the original point of shorting and going long, the ability to short is for price discovery. So you have some people that think the stock's not good. Some people that think it's really good. Mm -hmm. And then we'll figure out where the math actually figures out. But the problem is when you have such heavily shorted stocks, Reddit has figured out we can get the troops going. Yeah. And then the funds will follow and they'll short squeeze these funds that are all short. And and they have to buy the stock to cover their position. Yeah. So the stock goes berserk. So by I nature, mean, this don't is, you think that'll this just... This is public information. It's a Chamat's back. Yeah. Uh, Green Oaks Capital owns 30% of Clover. Do you think they're with Chamath on this? Do you think they're Chamath soldiers in, in some way? No, I think they just find out what's short. Do you think it has nothing to do with I think it's Chamath. just math. I think Wall Street bet- It just so happens a lot of Chamath's backs are heavily hey, short. Team Brown. Yeah, exactly. Team Brown won yeah. between Neil and Chamath in the yeah. last 48 hours. Yeah. Oh How much does Chamath own of Clover? 17% Green Oaks owns 30. Fuck. That's so much money. Just because you're like hot on Reddit. Yeah. But don't you think in the future, so what happens? So obviously this won't go on forever. What happens in the future? Uh, people won't, crazy short things like this because it leaves vulnerabilities. I think that's I yeah. think that's the lesson that if you go crazy short a stock, Reddit's gonna figure it out gonna get and you. make it a meme stock. So they're like the police in there. Yes. Yeah. Like there's this new risk. And like Wendy's is popping. I love Wendy's. Yeah. I mean you should jump in on the stock. A little frosty. I might get well, in there. Wendy's is up twenty five percent today. And what's crazy is I when I, I I saw it this morning that Clover was going nuts. So I was like Huh. I wonder if I look up Chamat's SPACs, you know, are they heavily shorted? Almost all of them are heavily shorted. So there's someone who believes that there's there's a lot lot of people people. that believe (laughs) that don't think his companies are good. So I, this morning, I was like, I'm just going to do it for fun. I'm going to put a thousand bucks on uh, buy some options, a call option on Metro Mile, which is also shorted. Is it heavily shorted? I didn't know that. It's not like 40%. It's like 16, 17%, which is still high. Um, and so I bought it and the stock's up 15%. So if you think about what shorting is allowing is real price discovery. Yeah. yeah. Like don't short the hell, you'll get crushed. Yeah. Because I want to short Cause, o- cause, o- Oatly, which yeah. is now worth $16 billion. Shorting's a tough business. Yeah. It's really tough to win when you're shorting. No, nah, it's impossible, I feel like. Yeah. Okay, well, 
who is there a ringleader of this? Like, is deep fucking value? Is there like a is there like a leader? So there is a private Wall Street Bets Reddit group that I'm not part of. That where I think this all bubbles and then it starts leaking. It has to be approved by yeah. Mr. Oh, Wall Betts. Street Bets on Instagram. Hit me up. Let's let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we could have figured out Clover. <laughs> Fuck. All he sent me was a diamond emoji. <laughs> And so so this this is actually a true story. Uh, in my mom's uh, private wealth account, she owns some clover because I told her to buy some clover. Like recently? Uh, a while ago. So the position was down and then, you know, it's come back a little bit. And the private wealth managers reached out to me yesterday and said, hey, the stock's been down a lot. Um, no. Now I think you're, you're finally plus money. Do you want to sell? And I said, to the moon, Wall Street Bets and Reddit are all over. I swear to God, oh, I have the yeah. email. I was like, Wall Street Bets and Reddit have made this a meme stock. This is going to the moon. And what did those guys say? They thought you were speaking they Chinese. They thought I was insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they literally thought. And I purposely was so extra yeah. in the yeah. email. Like emojis. Yeah. <laughs> emojis. <laughs> to the moon, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Buckle they, up. <laughs> They email me today, and I'm like, to the moon. Oh, and what did they say? What was their response? They just said, unbelievable. Like, they were speechless. Because it's up 100% today, right? Yes. Or by 80%, whatever. Insane. I purposely was trying to be so, like, tiktok -y. Yeah. <laughs> to them, you're that guy that ran up on stage at the Bitcoin yeah, conference yeah, and ripped yeah. his shirt off. Yeah. That's what Anand is. It's so good. Oh, my God. Incredible. Okay. Well, there we go, man. I, I mean, pay attention to Reddit. Let's talk about Apple. Apple had their big WWDC uh, conference. Yep. Um, where they announced all their new stuff. Um, I still miss the old Steve Jobs ones. I just felt like they were, there's a lot more going on at Apple these days, but I just miss those big monumental, like, hey, here is 5,000 songs in your pocket. And you're like, <laughs> what? You know, we don't really get any of those. Um, but what we are getting, among other things, is it seems like they're really tying in like this social interaction element yeah. into their products. So iMessage, FaceTime, they're like really enhancing the experience of how you engage with your friends. I think what they've realized is, you know, the iOS 14 update, which was kind of like a, which was a big blow to Facebook advertisers yep. um, and people's kind of reliance on them. They then took some more features where I think if you integrate in communicating, Apple becomes more and more hard to break. Yep. Because like if that's the way you communicate with everyone in your life, then why would you leave it, right? Yep. So the first one is you can FaceTime with Android and Windows users now with the new update. Do they download a FaceTime app? They'd probably, they'd be, they'll also be able to yeah, I think Android and Windows users will probably have to download some new app. But huh? that's huge. I mean, I've, I've never seen anyone with an Android, that their face. Yeah, that's probably the most like... Um, <laughs> Friction. Like olive branch move that's happened in the last decade. That would never happen under Steve Jobs. Talk about uniting people. Yeah. You know? I, Two Steve, groups that have never spoke. No. <laughs> I don't think you can even call them no. currently. <laughs> It's green. Yeah. It brings different. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Steve would have never allowed that. No. Um, then they have a new feature called share play, which lets you hold a FaceTime call and watch a streaming movie or listen to music or share your screen with your contacts. So the idea is, is like think Twitch, but like you're FaceTiming and get to watch with your bae. Maybe she's traveling. You want to call me tonight and watch TikTok together? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen, yeah, right? For sure. But you're like 14 year olds. Like, yo, 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 watch this. Watch, watch this. It, yeah. yeah. It'll be four hours later. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah. This would have been a good feature last year. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I think if you think about all the features inspired it. they're announcing is basically realizing they've mastered hardware, but they have no inroads in software. Yeah. So they're trying to figure out and play catch up. Plus, you gotta be pissed if like you have all these great features, but like so many people are messaging on Snapchat and so many people are blah, blah, blah on yeah. this. Like so many people are using other products to just communicate. I would say absent, I'm in a lot of group chats, absent maybe two to three. They're all on WhatsApp. They're not on iMessage. 
That's yeah. That's for me. Yeah. They're all on. Like, don't you think it's a huge ball drop that throughout the whole pandemic, essentially our options for video chatting were Google and Zoom. Like, where's FaceTime? Why can't FaceTime be built out into a Zoom-like product? Yeah. FaceTime should have been Zoom. Yeah. Why not? They should have made a uh, enterprise product. Everyone already has iPhones. Yeah. If you work at any of the companies that are using Zoom, ninety percent chance you have an iPhone. Yeah. Why not? And, and everyone, all these people have iMacs anyway, so it's built in. It's an app on your thing. So it just seems like to me, if I'm sitting there, there is a lot of missed opportunity with, for just lock in on your products by the way that people are using other apps to communicate, which is fundamentally what your thing's built for. Like, why doesn't Apple have a Slack? Yeah, competitor. Sure, they should have all that. You should try to eliminate as much communication on third party apps. Hundred percent. Apple. You lock in. And I don't know about, at that point, don't let Android users use it. Fuck them, right? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> then you have whole companies that are like, well, we all got to be on Apple. Yeah. Anyway, but I get it. That, that seems like they're doing it. It seems like they're doing it well. So, I mean, I would say Facebook has, that's a little bit of salt in the wound. I think it seems to me like, but, I mean, currently that iOS update is still a fucking nightmare. Yeah. For I mean, Facebook. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think Zuck is heated. He has to be so heated. Yeah. That's a direct blow to your your main product. Yeah. I know we have a scene on social, but did you see Zuck throwing that spear? He threw a spear? Yesterday. At what? It went viral on social. What was he throwing? Like, like for fun? He threw a spear at like a wooden like plank. And it was just like Zuck just taking a spear and just I think that it. was a re- reaction to this <laughs> I conference. think it was. I think that I was think... Tim Cook on that. And in his mind, he's like, I'm going to just send a message to the world. I'm coming with my spear. Don't get within 20 or 30 feet of me. (laughs) Yeah. It was a good chuck. Was it? Yeah. I was impressed. I was impressed. I'm sure he has a lot of... If I watched the Logan Paul fight... I mean, he's done that that surfing thing that looked tough. Yeah. He just fucked it up with the sunscreen. (laughs) Sunscreen, yeah. You know? Like, it could have been No, there was a newer one. Oh, there was? Yeah, there was Less sunscreen? No sunscreen. Whoa. Look at him. Mark. Living life dangerously. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I, I just, that is one thing they continue to do so well. The other thing I saw, because I just caught like a clip of it, is um, you can have like your computer, your iPad, your phone, and you can drag oh, with shit. one mouse across them. That's sick. And you can even grab like a photo from your iPad and drag it and drop it like into Photoshop on your computer. <sighs> That's wild. I don't even know how... That's amazing. That. Yeah, no, I'm excited about all these features. Apple's doing a great job. Yeah. I love what you're doing over there, Tim. Love what you're doing over there, Tim. <laughs> Hopefully you can get doing. folks back in the office and uh, keep it keep it moving. <laughs> um, okay, Essence, uh, the online retailer. They don't have any physical stores, do they? I think they have maybe one in Montreal. This more like fun. a lifestyle. Yeah. Probably just to hang out. Okay, so the, the e-com uh, uh, retailer. Um, has secured a minority investment from Sequoia Capital, which has valued the company at over $5 billion. Big. This do we know is, revenue? Do we know anything on them? No, but um, they are... It's got to be in the Bs. Revenue in the Bs? I think so. For valuation at 5B? So anything, Probably. That seems low. Do you think if the revenue is in the Bs, your valuation is 10 B? But they're, 20, an e-com, e-com, B? Re, they're an e-com retailer. Sounds like SaaS. It's the yeah. first round of external funding in the company's 18-year history. Yeah. It started by three brothers. It's like a family biz. Yeah, so brothers. what is the business? It's pretty much a luxury retailer online. And Sequoia Capital China is making the investment because they want to bring... You know, luxury goods in China is obviously huge. Yeah. So I mean, the like lady easy... who made the investment from Sequoia used to be the former editor of Vogue China. Mm-hmm. And she's the one that's leading the investment and kind of like putting her name on it. And, you know, it, it says a minority investment. So usually that means somewhere between like 15 and 40%. So Sequoia, Sequoia wrote, a billion dollar check at least. And it's likely all secondary because if they didn't need money for 18 years, they probably don't need, need money now. Yeah. yeah. So it's a big bag alert for the brothers. So they get 100 million monthly page views. Yeah. And 80% of its audience is between the ages of 18 and 40. Highly sought after demographic. Young money. Good for these guys. Where are these guys from? Montreal. That's where uh, Shopify is, right? Or Shopify so 100 is million... Page views, 
Five billion valuation. Yeah, I don't know. I, my guess would be six hundred million in revenue. Okay. Because I mean, look, you know, you know, you can take this thing. If they're going to China, you can double sales in the next three years. So in two thousand eighteen, the business of fashion, um, the online blog said that it's been profitable from day one and aimed to draw one billion in revenue by twenty twenty. So oh. let's. If that article came out in 2018, COVID spike, yeah. that $1 billion is probably $1.5, $1.7 billion. Okay. What, revenue? Yeah. That's but then think. doesn't five seem low? Yeah, they got well, If you're profitable <laughs> at $1 billion, 5x revenue, and you're on a profitable company, that's absurd. And it's a marketplace. It's not a marketplace. It's a retailer. Why not? It's not, it's not marketplace. They're All buying do inventory. Is put, a, put a feed in from it's, Supreme. <laughs> okay, well, either way, listen. Bag alert. Big bag alert. I mean, you got a billion. Yeah. At least. Yeah, at least a billion. Okay. All right. Good shit. I like Essence. Yeah. Not even mad at it. It's a great site. Okay. Let's talk about Jeff Bezos and life after CEOing Amazon. Yeah. This guy said, I think everyone kind of wondered, like, what's he going to do? Is he going to run other companies, start other companies? Is he going to gallivant around the world with Lauren Sanchez? Um, Or maybe... Is he going to strap him and his brother to a rocket and blast themselves <laughs> to outer space? That's what seems like it's happening. You're on the first flight? Don't Crazy. be on the first flight, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I, I when I saw that, I genuinely was nervous. Isn't, aren't his parents, one of his parents still alive? Yeah, I think so. I would be like, yo, bro, one of you can go. Yeah. So they're going on July 20th. The ship is called New Shepherd. You yes. can actually... Join them if you like. Currently, the, the top bid for oh. a seat aboard the flight is two point eight million. That was a few days ago. It has to be higher now. Mellow, bro. If you're an up and coming, like you know, like run, like one of these guys from Essence. If you survive space in. with Bezos, you're, you're good forever. on the boat. If I'm one of the <laughs> Essence brothers, I'm in there. Yeah, that's worth the money. I, if I was like a Doge coin holder that made a bag, I'd go do it. Think about what you can learn from this guy. You'll have a lifelong bond. <laughs> and it's survive. a long ass flight. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah, so, really, so, Jeff. Uh, tell me everything because we have a long fucking time. Yes. <laughs> but so, like first ship, you're not going to send a few test flights? Yeah. I heard, I had friends talk about the supersonic plane and they were like, no chance I'd be the first person to be no on chance. that New York to London flight. No well, chance. By the I'll way, be like an anti-vaxxer. I'll be like, you guys go first for a few years. So, uh, so the, 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 it says the space flight in space is only 11 minutes. So it's a short flight. Yeah, so what happened your... to like Scooter Braun and Bieber all buying tickets to go to space from years ago? That was like a Virgin Galactic. Did that just disappear? Well, well one of those Virgin things crashed. Yeah, I don't think they've put a passenger up there yet. So Jason Calacanis from the All In tweets this. It's a little morbid, but he tweeted it, not me. Okay. He said 600 folks have gone to space. 30 folks have died going or training to go to space. 14 were from the space shuttle, which was a flawed design. Taking out the shuttle accidents, Jeff Bezos is taking on a 2.6% chance of death, 1 in 40. Would you take that risk? No. That's uh, no. like a shot at because they're Team Elon. You know, all in pod, Jason's Elon's yeah. guy. Yeah. But I don't know. It just seems to me like what's the rate for Blue or Like, you know what stats I want? How many Blue Origin rockets? have successfully what's yeah. the percentage i have no idea no one knows oh well we yeah. don't know but someone knows. a lot of yeah. people know i'm sure but the point is like i would judge it just by blue origin it's a new you're not going on a nasa flight mm -hmm. to the iss yeah so that percentage is probably pretty much higher gotta be i mean we see those those um spacex rockets exploding every month <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once a month he blows up one of those things if i had to pick a rocket to go on it'd be bezos over Virgin Galactic and SpaceX. Can you imagine? Fair, but I, go on NASA. Like Jeff Bezos, don't do this. It's I get this, it though, bro. I mean, look, if you're if you're the richest man in the world and you've lived this crazy life, you're probably like. Fuck and it. by the way, if he does it and it goes great, best ad. It's fuck he beats you, Elon. Because yeah. Elon, Elon said has said. I know he was talking about Mars, but he said like, I'm not going first. <laughs> he said that. <laughs> he said like maybe one day. I, I mean, if between like the crypto. Crash, yeah. um, Elon kind of fumbling. If Bezos in like thirty days, we could be looking at a very different Elon. Because this is July, right? July twentieth. If if Bezos successfully gets through this, 
Elon has to go to Mars like ASAP. He has to be in Mars by Labor Day. Remember when that guy <laughs> jumped from like the fringes of outer space, the Red Bull guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want this to, like uh, captured like that. Like I want to be able to like give me the yeah. Showtime app as yeah. long as it doesn't crash. Yeah. I want to watch the whole process. Yes. And have a party. We'll all have white claws. <laughs> yeah. and just be like, oh shit. Yeah. That's amazing. What are you doing? And you're taking Mark? Yeah. Bro, what? It says the Blue Origin rocket has been launched 15 times in 2012. And all times the crew capsule was secure atop the rocket. 15. 15 times. Not a good data set. Not enough? Not enough. It, do you think Lauren's approving of this? Hell no. She's pissed. Well, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Let's think about other options. Yeah, she's got, you know, she's got a lot of time. Mackenzie's like, go to fucking moon. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, Mackenzie's <laughs> like, yeah. Mackenzie's looking for screws to loosen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Just kidding. Totally just kidding. All right. Um, next up, let's talk about, ooh, let's talk about taxes. Thank God Tim's not here for this episode because yeah. I'd be pissed just at his <laughs> reaction. Uh, what do we got? I mean, someone snooped around and found out how much billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Elon, Michael Bloomberg are paying an income tax. Is that what we're dealing with here? Yeah, so IRS data is confidential. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's very, it's impossible. Like, you know, we've never seen Donald Trump's tax returns, right? Uh, and sure typically, happened. a presidential candidate releases their tax returns. Yep. ProPublica, somehow, this website, got hold of all these people's tax returns. And it's crazy. Like, the, like in 2000... Like how? 2007 and 2011, Bezos paid no tax. Um, and uh, Buffett's true tax rate was 0.1%. And... Uh, during the, fi- the the five year time frame that they they were able to capture, so when you keep looking and looking looking, even Bezos was slightly less than one percent during that same five year. But period. it's one percent of their net worth, is what you're saying. Yeah, which but that's why it's so f- yeah. That's stupid. a flaw. It's a flawed uh, discussion on a few things. Because okay, so if Bezos paid zero federal income tax in 2007 and zero in 2011. That's what they're saying. He earned some money. He might not have. But what would he do? I mean, all he, he would do He could have earned sell- like a quarter million dollars and have it written off with his expenses. Because exactly. this is the thing that I don't get. If you're Jeff Bezos, why don't you just take a million dollar salary and pay the fucking taxes? Pay 50%. It's for options. Like, why, like do, yeah, why do actually zero? Yeah, it's just stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a fair point. That's Come why he's on. going to the moon because he wants to pay taxes. Yeah, what's taxes on the moon? <laughs> yeah. I think that this is where the Tims of the world get it confused. Like, this is the tax code. If you don't sell positions, all the people we're talking about hold positions in whether it's their own company, public stocks like Buffett. You don't incur a tax event until you sell. Yep. And if you don't sell, there are no taxes. And if you hold long enough, your tax rate is long-term capital gains, which is one year. But if he, yeah, if he sells um, stock, it's long-term. Of course, gains, right? yeah. You, I'm just shocked that he made no money. But bro, pay yourself the salary. It's just like I get it. And to be honest with you, but it still wouldn't. It wouldn't show up because, except for those two years, for whatever reason, he yeah. didn't. <laughs> 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 it's a percentage of net worth. So yeah. even you know, how much would he have to pay himself? $20 billion to like make it. But, but the point is, yeah. is if you just showed like George Soros paid no federal income taxes between 2016 and 2018 because he lost money on investments. Okay. Carl Icahn paid no federal income tax in 2016 and 2017. Um, I don't expect Icahn to pay a dollar ever. <laughs> so that's a whole different discussion. Yeah. But I think I think people need to understand like this For, is the tax code. Yeah. So when you are owners of these businesses and you don't sell, yeah, you don't incur taxes. The people yeah. who get screwed who earn a lot of current income, yeah, that is not an equity, you get screwed. Yeah. I think lawyers get screwed the most. Lawyers and doctors. Why? Because they actually make a lot of money. Oh, but it's all income. But it's people that make five hundred k to two to three million dollars oh, uh, annually, em- but are employees and not getting equity. Yeah, but I mean, invest. 
Uh, you're right, but yeah. I'm no, just but saying like fifty three percent's gone in yeah. Cascade, California. You're right. I'm just saying like, um, but all those people then go play the investment game where you you're playing the same game. You yeah, I mean? I, yeah, but your income comes from your salary, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas know, if you're I, an I, entrepreneur, I, I, we know you can do a lot of. Yeah, or if you own these public positions, this is the, like the dirty little secret of finance. You get to borrow at sub one percent money. Yeah, that's the real hack. But I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, part of me is like, yeah, it's fucked up. I'll be honest. But part I don't of me is just shit. like you're looking at the wrong place. I don't care. Like, this isn't even the thing. And it's like I don't yeah. know, man. You, you, you've, this guy's created so many freaking jobs. I, I just have trouble like. Yeah, why are really you hating on that? It. Yeah, Carl every Icon, job, every you job can hate creates? on Carl Icahn. He what? probably doesn't create a lot of jobs. Yeah. <laughs> for every, Bezos, stay away from Bezos. Let him get on Blue Origin. Let him go to if, space. For every job, safely. every job you create, you should get five percent off your taxes. I wish Tim was here. So that means that they just we pay Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. a billion dollars a year. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what your neighborhood's like. My neighborhood, every car is an Amazon truck dropping something off. Yeah, every car is a Urus. Well, forget. I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just true. thinking about it's the Euros, jo- Amazon, Euros, Amazon. <laughs> yeah. The number of jobs that I see on a daily basis, yeah. just in my own like little. I agree. Neighborhood. It's- He's the modern day Steve Jobs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's talk about Kanye. Yeah, uh, Kanye dropped a gap piece. Already? Yes, what did he we do? finally got the collection has dropped. What did he dropped? Do I, do I have an image in here? It's one piece only. It's a two hundred dollar. You called bo- it a collection. I'm kidding. It was a joke. Two hundred dollar bright blue nylon puffer jacket huh. was released on Tuesday. Huh? It's Kanye's forty fourth birthday. It's, you know, it's a very spacey looking item. Okay. Um, Is he the bidder for the second seat on the Bezos? He, not a bad in, idea. Bro, hop in. It's, it's a unisex coat. It's bright blue. Um, three hours later, it said it's sold out. The interesting thing. Logan Paul should take the spot. Oh, that's a good one. The, the, the interesting thing is it doesn't ship till the fall. They're on that like Gap you know, is on that pre-order list. That tour merch. Life, what are you, you Travis know? Scott? Do McDonald's merch? Gap is like Instagram model merch. Do you Isn't think- that what Instagram models do? They just put things for sale. And oh say yeah, yeah. Ninety days. Not Instagram do- models. Travis Scott. Is there any part of you? Yeah. You guys know Kanye. Yeah. Is there any part of you that this is part of the marketing? Oh, that's a good idea. Like, let's make Gap feel like everything else. Yeah. Or Gap was like. We saw the coat. We think it's whack. I think we should Let's do a pre-order it. for this yeah. one. <laughs> but don't you think you should have like 10,000 units? You're the gap. But that's why I don't even know how it's sold out if it's pre-order. Yeah, you can make as many as you want. They just either turned it up. That's why when Gap said it's sold out in three hours, I was like, oh shit, is it shipping right now? This feels like hype. This and, feels made up. And yeah, it's made up. So people that don't know, streetwear is all fake. It, you just turn off the sales whenever you want. Yeah, TikTok. And you said, what's up, TikTok? <laughs> yeah, what's like up? Them, like the- TikTok, streetwear is fake. <laughs> fake. <That's a> <laughs> yeah. These people are pre-ordering the goods and telling you it's sold out. It's bullshit. But that's what the gap is now doing? Yeah. What's happening here? I feel like they just want this to feel like streetwear and to get the, get the ball rolling. Yeah. Soften people up for- But why is there only one item then? Do 50 items- he probably only approved one item. Probably yeah. only approved one item or Gap is fucking really unsure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, okay. I don't know. I, My guess is Kanye is the stumbling block, not the Gap. You think the Gap, as shitty of an operator as they've been for the last 15 years. They can't make a blue they jacket They be like, hey, we should probably have more than one blue jacket. We should probably have it in stock. Maybe that's, maybe that's what they said. Kanye, we need one jacket. That's what we're going to drop this year. Come up with your best jacket. Yeah, I'd love to know what happened. I mean, I'm dying to know what happened here. Okay. Well, hey, if anyone got their hands on the jacket, uh, congratulations. Yeah. When's the rest come? Fall? I mean, if they're going to do the pre-order game, you may not get any Kanye gear till next year. All right. Happy birthday, Kanye, by the way. Social Gap Club. Happy birthday, Kanye. 44, man. All my young heroes are turning 44. (laughs) Some are turning 50. (laughs) Some are much older. Um, okay. 
on that sad news, why don't we jump right into the saddest and unhappiest cities in America? <laughs> we have a list. What are they? So as I laugh. Alaska, Anchorage. Interesting choice. You know where? And I'm only saying this because uh, Robert is from there. The saddest city in America is Fresno, California, hmm. according to the website Facti. And the way they've done it hmm. is it's a combination of a few metrics. Okay. Unemployment rate, 14%. Wow. Divorce rate, 11%. Wow. Three-year change in earnings per, in, per individual, negative 1.1%. Wow. Well-being index score, which I think is just like your health and all that stuff, 61. Poor mental health days, four. Misery score, 74.8. Well, how the hell do you calculate a misery score? It's all that combined is the misery yeah. score? So no, okay. no, all that combined tells you that they're the saddest place in America. Got it. Number two is Fayetteville, North Carolina. Where Jay Cole's from. Really? Yeah. Sad. Sad place. <laughs> Port St. Lucia, Lucia in Florida. Um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hmm. Fort Lauderdale. Looks what? like a happy place to me. I thought it's people would be happy in Fort Lauderdale. Newark, New Jersey. I believe that. Very well. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. You have a rapper for every city. Yeah. <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. Killers. They were really sad. <laughs> Are they from Vegas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Memphis, Tennessee. Every country artist. Yes. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Memphis? Memphis, I thought it was cool. Springfield, Massachusetts, Buffalo, New York, and Modesto. So what's your take? Away? Akron, Ohio's oh, here. Wow. No. Yeah. What number? I'm, they're down below. You guys are, you're, you're cracking the top 10. You're a pretty sad bunch. I guess we're a sad bunch. I got to call and check on my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think all these cities just mirror unemployment rates? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think unemployment rate drives the sadness. That's San Bernardino's sad. on there. Yeah. Sad. Crazy. Sad, how you sad Bernardino. Sad Bernardino. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, shit, man. I, I'm going to be honest. Some of those places, like Fort Lauderdale, even San Bernardino, like you're not far from the action. Weather's nice. Yeah. You can just drive right into Huntington Beach whenever you want. For fun. Spend a day. Yeah. All right. Sad. Sad. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about some happy news. Uh, Joe Biden and his administration, uh, they have some plans to strengthen the, uh, you know, some of our critical supply chains because one of the things that we realized during the pandemic was just how incredibly reliant we are on China. Yep. And, you know, I mean, for a lot of reasons, that's not good. You don't want to be so dependent on one place. Also, you know, there's a little bit of tension. A little uh, so it's probably not so good. Probably good to put some eggs in some other baskets. So it looks like uh, Joe is doing just that. So this, um, they're ordering a report to be done. And the focus is the U.S. government doling out some money to help build some of this supply chain. So the first one is uh, large capacity lithium batteries. So the Department of Energy is aiming to release a 10-year plan to develop a domestic lithium battery supply chain. So this is for electric vehicles. Um, there is an uh, advanced technology vehicles manufacturing loan program will distribute $17 billion to support this program. So okay. if you want a business idea, go build a freaking lithium battery plant in some one of those sad ass cities yeah you just have a, you have a list yes <laughs> any job that's where you should go then rare earth minerals uh figuring out sustainable production that minerals that can be used in cell phones cars and magnets uh and as long as they're done in high environmental standards semiconductors which we've talked about the issue because a lot of that yep. come from china and taiwan and then advanced pharmaceutical in ingredients and i think this is similar to like the fentanyl issue and all these other, a lot of pharmaceuticals are made in China. Yeah. And what we noticed is we're so, our supply chain is so fragile because of its reliance on a few countries. And I'll give you an example. Eight day, 10 days ago, the Shenzhen port was shut because of COVID outbreak. And Shenzhen's port is one of the largest in the world. And it got so backed up that like we have, we have a container two containers, I think one or two containers stuck there. 
And it's going to take forever now to get shipped. And then forever, it'll be a clog here yeah. because there'll be 10,000 freaking containers sitting in the middle of the ocean. And we, we just can't, especially with critical items like lithium ion batteries, which are so critical now to like American technology. We got to figure out how to make that stuff locally. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk about stuff like all of our medication and like, you know, there was a problem especially during COVID, where like all of our PPE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that stuff. So like, you're just so at the mercy of... Yeah. Yeah, the rumor was that Trump had to stop calling it the China virus in April because they were withholding PPE. Oh, that's wild. Okay. Well, hey, Joe, good stuff, man. Saw yeah. what you did with the vaccine. Yeah. Really great. Nice work. Let's use that, those same operation skills to uh, beef up the supply chain. Maybe add some more jobs to these sad, sad cities. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I like it. That's why we're all so damn sad. All of our shit's being made in China. No one has any freaking jobs. <laughs> Let's make Akron happy again. <laughs> Just kidding. That was kind of the whole thing, right? Yeah. Got it. Sorry. Makes now sense. you know why it uh, worked. worked. Got it. Okay. Uh, let's wrap it up. We got seen on social. What have you guys seen on social media in the last week that everyone needs to know? Yeah, I'm gonna put Jason on blast here. Oh. Our new, the new guy, uh, Jason. Um, uh, Brady, we'll a, call him Brady. We'll Brady. call him the new guy. Uh, <laughs> he uh, posted yesterday on our TikTok okay. about our AR15 conversation, and within 15 minutes, are we all had, canceled? Had 500 fucking comments of, of just clowning on the gun conversation. Oh my god! Like these guys are talking about calling it a killing machine, whatever, yeah. whatever. I was like, I should probably delete that. Like TikTok, we're not equipped to fight TikTok. They were mad at us because we called it a killing machine. Yeah, it was obviously all people that are pro guns and pro AR-15s, particularly. Yeah. It just got to that crowd. And it they were went. Just crazy. Yeah, I mean, he was like, it's going to get good traction. And it then did. there was another video he wanted to post that said, MAGA should understand that with Anand talking, I was like, Anand's life might be over, so we should just not yeah. post that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? I didn't post it. You're oh, lucky. Oh, man. I had that clip saved if you ever fuck with me. Gone <laughs> you would have oh gone viral. 100%. It would have got out 500,000 views. But, you know. Your safety could be harmed. Yeah. So are we going to be careful there? What are we doing? I think I think in TikTok... Or I would have been a hero. To Maybe uh, me and Depends Clay Travis would have gotten that rush. Like, no, no. Were you, were, you were a clown. You were, I was clowning Maggot. Yeah. I don't care. I do no, you, you should have seen the AR-15 clip. You don't want that heat. <laughs> it is fucking... I don't want that it's heat. It's him and I. It was Drama and I talking about it. And I was like, ah, delete this. No, no. I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that, like, virality heat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, where, like, you just get served to the wrong audience. <laughs> yeah, and your toes. Because it's getting all those views. And, tic and TikTok knows. They served it oh, directly to Mac. Know. Boom. Yeah, they, AR they know. They Fuck know. You. Yeah. Anger, <laughs> anger works. Yes. Fighting works. Yeah. So if we, if I were to say something inflammatory, it would get served. But now you see the game that Clay Travis, Ben Shapiro, all those guys it play. Works. You just played that game. If yes, you're willing you to deal with the heat, yep. yeah. you can go viral pretty quickly. Well, that's yeah. like, you know, Jake Paul. I'm sure he see, he sees the same heat that made D delete and triples down. he sees dollar signs. Yes. He's like, we need more of that. Yeah. And the thing was, is that- I just don't have that in me. That conversation, the clip was great. Yeah. Send me the, the clip, Jason. I'll send it to you right but, now. But the- <laughs> The the, the the he send them both so they can see it. Okay. The, the the thing was that if you had heard the whole conversation in context, he would have gotten a different reaction. Yeah. But obviously, the new guy is good at clips. Sure. And he just went boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Jake Paul does. We got him from Ben Shapiro. <laughs> yeah. <I think. laughs> yeah, man. That you see the game. That's the game. We could play it. I just don't think I want that smoke. Oh yeah, I, I, I mean that video had so many comments in like ten minutes. It probably he, went he like, D, uh, can you come here for a second? <laughs> <laughs> D, I think I did something. Yeah, because it was like seven o'clock at night, and we yeah. were both here still. And I was like, eh, you should delete that. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, Anand, what about you? Uh, seen on social, uh, for some reason, these horse racing uh, events have record ratings. Wow. So Belmont Stakes, I think, was a couple weeks ago. The gambling? Is it the gambling? It has, it has to, to be, be right? Yeah. Just more legalized gambling. And it broke uh, last year's ratings. And I was just really curious what's going on other than gambling. It's got to be one of those weird just bet. Like, I feel like Davy Day Trader, retail stocks. Like, I feel like there's this world of, ga of 
quick come ups. Yeah, it's hot. Like, I can just make money off this horse that's on steroids. Yeah, but it does feel like maybe we're missing something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I I mean, I don't. Barstool talked about it. I mean, uh, I know Jack Harlow went to the Kentucky Derby recently. <laughs> What's popping? Kentucky Derby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, brand new horse <laughs> just hopped in. Um, okay, what well, uh, you know what I, I just think, shot him. <laughs> oh, <he's so laughs> cool. Put it on TikTok. Oh. Um, serve it to Peta. Uh, the uh, <laughs> um, I'm sure you guys talked about it. Maybe when I wasn't here, or maybe I talked about it. and I don't remember, but like I, I kind of went on a little bit of a social media, mainly YouTube, uh, like Fauci email deep dive, and like yeah. it's just pretty crazy how like. <laughs> I feel like um, the left is just completely ignoring it. Of course. But Fauci's becoming like a bit of a villain. Yeah. Like Fauci was like our guy. Yeah. Fauci was the guy and it was like, damn, Trump is a dick to him. What's the YouTube uh, university telling you? Well, Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro are saying. (laughs) 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 No, but it's um, just, I mean, I, I don't think that there's anything like directly like he's not directly screwed yeah but like damn he's tiptoeing the line well, yeah trump has made it clear he's going to continue to do rallies and it's all about fauci and even the clay travis it's like florida over fauciism so fauci is number one public enemy for the right wow who would have thought i mean for the right he never had a really a good rap but like fauci was i mean if innocent- you're if you're le- if you're biden and you care about the democratic party you got to sideline Fauci right away. Instantly. And for they political them, reasons, for you got to say, reasons, yeah, because you, you had your it's run. It's easy fodder for the right. Yeah. I'm watching Clay Travis. Now, Clay Travis is now my barometer for MAGA. Yeah. Because I go through his Twitter feed every day to see what, because he's what Rush Limbaugh, saying? right? Yeah. yeah. It's what's bubbling. He is playing the character. He's taking, it's like replacing, uh, the mom in Fresh Prince. You got to jump in yep. and play the role. That was, <laughs> so it, that, that was a big, uh, <laughs> Big role to fill. Yeah. So yeah. he's jumping in for Rush Limbaugh, the biggest radio show he's in the country. He's got to kick it up. Yeah. And I see what he, what's bubbling in his world is Fauciism. Yeah. They got to just, he should just, Joe Biden should say, you're fired. Yes. Instead, they asked Joe Biden on the way out of the uh, room the other day, would you ever fire Fauci? He said no. Ugh, Wouldn't even a, consider it. That's a big mistake. Big mistake. The, I mean, literally the story that's being spun is like Fauci paid essentially for COVID to be created. <laughs> <laughs> and then didn't watch that it didn't get leaked. And think, talk about bubble talk. In my local uh, shop, that the Italian spot I go to every single day, yeah. a woman walked in with a pound sign Team Fauci shirt. Wow. See? It's become political then. Yes. There's a fight here. Like, why would you... Like, a fight what would make you want to wear a Team Fauci shirt? You're, You're crazy. Just psycho. <laughs> You're just crazy. And that's West Hollywood. You're just like... It's... It's no different than a MAGA hat. You, that person can't complain about the red hat, right? No. They're just a different team. Yes. Yeah. If you're wearing a Lakers jersey, you can't compare about a, complain about a Bucks jersey. You mentioned this on him, but our boy, uh, the other Rogan, in my mind, was the first one to speak out about all this. I agree. Know. And now, like, the, a lot of things that people are saying are, like, almost exactly pulled from that episode. Yeah. If you didn't he, listen to that episode, Joe Rogan, uh, Josh Rogan, Really good detail about what. Too bad Rogan, as we discussed, got deplatformed, so no one heard that interview. By himself. Yeah. <laughs> and so now everyone's taking those clips, the way people steal and put yeah. it on TikTok as their own. It's so bad. It's so bad. I, I think it's I think it's really bad. Like the the effect that he has, at least on public discourse, if no matter if you agree with him or not, and to like lessen your distribution is just Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all we got. What's going on? We got a race. We got a race. July 24th or 25th, virtual Grand Running Club race. Head over to grandrunningclub.com. 5K, 10K, half marathon. And by the way, if you want to run in person, come out to Santa Monica, California. The new guy came. I'll be there. New guy came? New new guy came last night. How far are you running? Are you doing 10K? I'm doing a half marathon. I said, fuck it. What about new guy? What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to beat you at the half marathon. That's what I'm doing. Wow. wow. You got, are you a runner? Or are you? Yeah. I play soccer. So I'm a, I played college soccer. So you don't have any concern about a half marathon? No. Okay. Wow. Well, how old are you? 21. Oh. If you don't beat... This D. is Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, <laughs> he's half my age. Yeah. 
<laughs> you gotta beat him. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're just gonna go longer on the on the path, or what's your path on the beach? Uh, yeah, we're trying to figure it out right now. You can do it. Uh, I've seen another uh, group do a half marathon on the path. Which day are you gonna do it? So I'm gonna do it Saturday morning. Uh, we'll all meet there in the morning, and you know, I don't know what the rules are, or the laws, but I'm I planning mean, on a lot seen- of people. It seems like with the homeless situation down there, I don't know that a half marathon with a group of <laughs> group of nice people is really the biggest concern, right? Yeah. Or do they stop you? Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone's. Why would say they anything. stop you? No, it's like, what's the rule? Can what if I... there's just fifty people? Like, I think restrictions are going to be done June fifteenth. Yeah, but do you know, like, is it just like, yo, you can't do this here, like this thing, whatever the fuck you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't. It just seems like they would. Yeah. I'm. I want to get a hundred people to run with me. That's my goal. I'll do a five k. Okay. And I'll beat Jason. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. See, I like this. Yes. This feels a Come little... Come at me, Logan. <laughs> yeah. I want you guys to fight after So you'll race. beat Jason <laughs> in a 5K is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, this I'm looking fun. forward to it. God, I wish... Could I maybe do a 5K? When is this thing? July 24th. I could probably You can that. trot your way through a 5K. Yeah, I could do a little 10 and a half minute mile. <laughs> what's your mile... Um, what's your minute a mile? Uh... Well, how much? It's like for one mile, how long does it take me? No, for three miles, five k. Uh, I don't know, twenty, twenty-two minutes. Okay, okay. maybe <laughs> pretty fast. Maybe a little longer. Fast guy for the new guy. A little but, longer. But, but you're so you're gonna try to race. You're gonna race both brothers essentially. You're yeah. gonna try to you smoke like, on okay. it <laughs> and then keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, you can't pace yourself. Oh, if I beat you on the bus. Yeah, I might be. I might beat him. Yeah, honestly, gonna, gonna be, be exhausted. sprinting right off the line. I'm gonna be tired. Yeah, you're gonna have to pace I'm, the next I'm basically nine the miles. fall guy. Yeah. Jason's gonna smoke me, and D's gonna win the, like the half marathon. If you can, if you are Marley's. slower than me and half marathon. We have to do something. We need some We're going to do the MAGA here. TikTok on you. Oh, so God. they attack you. I got to get flamed. <laughs> yeah, we'll write the script. You have to say it and post it. <laughs> I'll take it. I can, okay. I'll take that heat. <laughs> this is He's like, I'll get famous. <laughs> the young people. I'll tell you, the young people are built different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they see what's happening and they're like, fuck it, man. Yep. 500 me. comments in like eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, okay, do we have any shout outs? We do have one shout out from Peter Jankowski. He says, hey guys, big fans of the pod, avid listener and subscriber. Also love that you guys are good friends with Eric Deluxe. Yes. I had some small promo merch made up. Just want to send some to you guys. Let me know your mailing address. I'll get that to you ASAP. Thank you so much. Sincerely, Peter J, a.k.a. DJ Sincere. Awesome. Shout out to I like Peter. that merch life. Shout out to Peter and Eric Deluxe. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, making out to a, a DJ night. Making it out. To yeah. A, yeah. Like where would you, where do you think you're going to be? I mean, in somewhere in LA. Like a poppy? Drake was at Poppy the other night, I saw. He's everywhere. I, I go on Instagram, I see Drake's out. Huh. I mean, the one night we went out, Drake? we saw Drake. <laughs> Maybe that's album? Is that getting ready for album momentum? What the fuck is that album? Boredom. I think it's boredom. Okay, that's fair. All right. Um, DJ Night it is. Is that it? That's all we got for shout outs? That's the only shout out we got today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. Make sure you check us out on uh, TikTok at Group Chat News. Mods. Group Chat News. Group Chat News. We are exploding. So unfortunately, our next live event will be all 16-year-olds. But fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're becoming famous. We, it's, the fame is just too much on TikTok right now. So we're gonna, we actually have dance lessons uh, <laughs> this evening. And, uh, you know, we'll see you over there. China right. likes what we're doing. Hey, what can we say? They're saying very good things. By the way, China, great place. Go right <laughs> <laughs> We went back and edited some old episodes. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on Thursday.